phase three is composite particles. Now there's hundreds of composite particles and it's incredibly confusing. Um, they're found in collider experiments, but basically it's two or more particles forming another particle. It might be easier instead of memorizing and learning hundreds of these particles, think of them as groups, right? A particle merges two or more of these, quarks as they're called, mesons, three baryons, four tetraquarks, five now pentaquarks. So think of them really in, in these groups. But even if you don't remember this, these two are of course the most important composite particles to remember because they are the core of atoms and that's protons and neutrons. They are composite particles. Now, really, what are they? And that's one of the goals of the EWT project, right? To answer some of these questions. How do protons and neutrons form? What are those things in the, in the center of these? Uh, what are those quarks? And how do we explain experimental results from colliders and decay experiments? So the EWT project is a refresher. It's a simulate the creation of particles, atoms, and matter with classical physics. And phase three specifically is the formation of composite particles and the formation of the proton and the formation of the neutron because they are going to be used when we create atoms in phase four. And I'm going to give an update on phase two, which was the elementary particles, a little bit later in this video. It's again in Blender, and this is the quantum microscope um, add-on for Blender. You can see it here in the tab, but you need to download it, uh, follow the instructions in previous videos. And I am now on this tab here called Nucleons. So what we're going to do is simulate composite particles or nucleons forming the uh, core of uh, what's in atoms, so protons and neutrons. I'm going to begin with electrons here shaded in blue and a positron there shaded in pink. Go ahead and call them quarks and antiquarks if you want. Um, don't get hung up on terminology, but this is what's important. We're going to add a tremendous force. Now normally electrons will repel, but let's assume a tremendous force here to get them to the point where they stop repelling, and that's exactly what this has modeled. They actually start with a charge and repel and are uh, forced together. Whoops force together until they're within each other's standing waves and actually form this tetrahedron automatically and then the positron is in the middle. Now we think of it as a proton, so just for fun we've added this uh, particle shell, red is the proton, you can even x-ray in to see what it looks like there in the, the middle. You can still see those um, the what makes up that composite particle such as the proton. Let's get rid of the x-ray again and go back to uh, showing the view I was uh, showing you earlier. Um, and it even spins, has the same, if you watch the electron video, has the same spin of the electron, which is a kind of a strange, it takes two rotations to get back to normal. The fun thing about this though, is that you can adjust the number of electrons and positrons, such as two electrons and a positron and see what that forms. Let's do, you can zoom in there, you can see what three, might look like. Zoom in here. Right, you can see that uh, they form interesting shapes but no, almost always um, equal distance for at least between the charged particles and, and the anti-particle there in the middle kind of holding them together. And then the last one I want to, no actually two more, let's do this. Let's show both an electron and a positron. This is um, Really interesting because there's annihilation, right? They get attracted to each other. Uh, they actually look like one right there, but until it splits off. But we can't really detect um, a, pro a proton and electron merging together. They, they annihilate. But anyway, that kind of shows the process very, very quickly. Let me just rewind that. Kind of shows the process of, of merging. Pause that. You can see just the colors are blended. That's just the way that Blender is kind of illustrating the two particles kind of merging. Um, eventually they do split here. I'm not sure if that's exactly accurate because it would normally take a, a photon to uh, to separate those two. But anyway, but now that you've got the gist of things on how to do this, let's do one more. And I'm going to do five electrons and one positron. They're again forced together, high energy. See the shape that takes uh, this time. Again, this is all happening naturally with, uh, with Blender physics, right? Um, again, a tetrahedron forms. This time in the middle, they're paused. Remember that 
uh, annihilation of electron and positron, that, that one in the middle there is, is forming exactly that. Or you kind of see that blue and then you see that pink. So the one in the middle is annihilated, uh, therefore it has no, no charge, you can't detect it. Anyway, that so far is the model of a proton, four electrons and one positron. Um, let's just do that one again so you can see it. And then when you get to five, you have um, the neutron combinations form like mesons, baryons. But how to prove this now? This is the fun part. So today we run experiments, you know, beta decay can, um, let's just do this, let me just show it instead of I've trying created to... created a particle accelerator and we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to map this now to experimental evidence. And on the right I've got a neutron. Again, this is our structure with, and there in the center is that multicolored pink slash blue particle because it's a, an highlighted electron and positron. And we're about to fire off, I've just hit play, a neutrino there in black. Now what happens in neutron beta decay results? That neutron becomes a proton. And this is our model of the proton, just circled there. And what does it eject? It ejects a neutrino and an electron. This identically matches what's shown in beta decay results. And to be clear, it's not a quark that is ejected from a neutron, it is an electron. And so there's a huge hint, right, that quarks uh, might be electrons and, and anti-quarks might be positrons. So let's take this a step further now, right? Let's do... Let's pretend like uh, it's low energy particle accelerator uh, collisions, you know, when a proton was first um, thought to be three quarks or modeled as three quarks that happened because of particle accelerator experiments dating back to the 1960s. And let's fire off a particle there. Let's hit pause right there. So at low energy now, uh, you know, it barely budges that, that positron there in the middle. But what happens? Right? You see it's sort of annihilate there, it's, it's merging with that one, and, and when uh, you saw that annihilation earlier, when two particles annihilate, you can't detect them, right? So, what remains? Three quark, one, ah, that's a horrible view. One, two, three particles that can be detected as three quarks. Now, it's worth noting that uh, in the last couple of decades, it was first uh, found in the early 2000s, but not really validated until just a few years ago, the pentaquark structure of the proton. Um, to do this, you have to uh, remember that over time, these accelerators add more and more energy, and so that's why I have a strength field here. Let's, let's bump it up to a lot more, right? Let's, let's fire off something. Ah, hold on, pause. Nice thing about blenders, I can kind of rearrange things, right? Let's get that into centered into view a little bit better. Okay, and now we're going to hit play again. Now watch, there's something with more. It's this. One, two, three, four, five. You know, we can do even better. Let's add more energy than that. Uh, okay, let's do this. Now with a lot more energy, we see, boom, one, two, three, four, five, four quarks and an anti-quark, which is now known as a pentaquark structure of the proton. Why? Because there's more energy and it has more energy to be able to separate these. And actually, even that mistake that I made earlier where it barely separated is kind of like the hint from early 2000 when they thought they might have seen a pentaquark, but it wasn't really validated until much later. So there you have it, uh, a lot of fun by uh, adding a particle accelerator to see what happens when collisions occur and when you take this off, when you add forces, and you can manage the external force here, when you add forces, uh, what types of particles you might form. And there you have it, um, composite particles being formed from known particles like the electron and positron. And that's a quick update on what has been achieved so far with Blender and the add-on for Blender. But there's a lot that Blender can't do, and for that reason, we have uh, open an open project for designing a, a true simulator matching all the requirements. Now, as a quick update, last video I mentioned space-time um, phase one was already closed and and paid out for a winner. Uh, phase two, there are people working on it, but I know it's complicated. We changed it instead of being date driven. Um, it's until completion, with completion being at least 80% of the requirements that are listed on the website. So that is still open as for phase two, but we've gone ahead and, and uh, published the requirements and the video here for phase three, which is composite particles or nucleons. Uh, in a couple of months, I'll put out a video uh, explaining phase four, which is atoms. But here you go, here are the prize, uh, prizes and um, you know, still open for, for phase two. 
Now for more information on those requirements and for the project, here is the URL for the EWT project. Thank you and have a good day.